Hello, this video is based on my colleague's request. Actually, it's very important. It helps in more than one course. It is used in stress analysis, machine design. So even if you pass MM2, you will use this chapter later. In this video, I'll solve example 410 in machine design book. But first, let's have a look over MM2 equations and main concepts. I'll start from plane stress and take this element, which is cubic in 3D, and draw the stresses on it. Sigma y is the stress along the y-axis, sigma x is the stress along the x-axis, and z along the z-axis. When stress is outwards, it means that the cube is under tension, and when it starts the cube, it means that the cube is in compression. Now tau, shear, tau which is the shear, shear stress, has two subscripts. The first one denotes the face on which the stress acts. The second gives the, the direction on that face. For example here, Y denotes the face on which the stress acts, and X is the direction of this face. Similarly for tau x, y, tau z, x, and tau x, z, and the others. Here, tau y, x is equal to tau x, y, tau y, z equal to tau z, y, and tau z, x is equal to tau x, z. Hat should be on the hat and tail on the tail. Here the tail is on the other face, but it can't be seen here. Now the same element is uh, in 2D, here are the stresses and the shear stress head on the head and tail on the tail. This element here is oriented in 3D XY Z direction, 2D in the XY plane and 2D oriented in X1 Y1 direction or axis. This element here is oriented in angle theta. Now the purpose of this is to determine the equations by taking a wedged shape and do a free body diagram and apply the equation of equilibrium. I won't do the derivation of the equations, I'll just uh, give you a summary of them. These are the equations. Here are the general equations, shear transformation, principal equations of stress and strain and the principal shear angle, principal shear angle also in stress and strain. These equations were uh, used a lot in mechanics of material, mechanics of material. Let's solve this problem on combined bending and torsional stresses. We have to find the highly stressed locations on the bracket and determine the applied and principal stresses at those locations. We will limit our study to the rod, which is loaded both in bending and in torsion. We choose points A and B to be critical, because they are on the wall where A has, has higher normal stress and B has higher shear stress. We will find the stresses on both points and compare them. Here, let's do a cut on the rod and apply Newton's first law, summation of forces equal to zero. Normal is equal to zero. The internal force Vy equal to F on the y-axis. And uh, along the z-axis, there are no forces. So Vz equal to zero. Summation of moment equal to zero. On the x-axis, we have a torque. So uh, Tx equal to F times A, the distance. On the y-axis, there is uh, no moment. So My equal to zero. On the z-axis, we have a bending moment, so mz equal to the force times the distance at. The common mistake that students usually misunderstand is the position we are looking from while doing the sign convention. Here, I drew this assembly on SOLIDWORKS to make it clear for you. Here is the rod and the arm. Here are points A and B. Uh, while doing the sign convention, we don't have to look from this side. We have to flip, to flip it to the other side and look at it from this position, where A, which is here, and B on this point, 
they are here this is a point A and this is a point B okay let's go back now we can apply right hand rule according to sign convention the stress is going from point A downwards which makes A under tension this means that the stress here is positive and uh, here the, uh, the stress is along is around the Z axis the moment is around the Z axis so we have on point A normal bending stress which is Sigma X equal to MZ times C over I moment is uh, here MZ along the around the Z axis we determined it before which is force times L and C is the radius I is the moment of inertia, which is pi over 4 times r power 4. On point I, we have uh, torsional shear stress. Its formula is T torque times LR over J, which is polar uh, moment, which is pi over 2 times r power 4. We just have to apply uh, the values or to substitute the values in these equations in order to find the stresses. Here we don't have a transverse shear stress because uh, A is on the upper side, which ma which makes Q equals equals to zero. Now we apply principal stresses formula to find the maximum stress, the maximum stress and the intermediate stress, and the smallest stress is always zero. It's not necessarily to be smallest stress because um, they determine the first two stresses that are determined from the equations. If they are both positive, then sigma 3 is equal to 0. If one of them is a positive and the other is negative, then sigma 2 is equal to 0. If both are negative, then sigma 1 is equal to 0. But always sigma 1 should be the uh, higher stress, sigma 2 is the intermediate and sigma 3 is the smallest stress. Now let's go to point B. B is a pure shear because as you know that the normal stress is zero at the normal axis and it is highest at the edges. So at B we have a transverse shear stress which is VQ over IT. Q is area times Y bar and T is the thickness 2R. But because here this uh, this is a solid circle, we use directly this formula, 4V over 3A. And we substitute the values in this formula in order to, to determine the shear transverse stress. Also, there is torsional stress on point B as it is on point A. We determined it before. So we just have to add torsion shear stress and transverse shear stress in order to determine the total shear stress on B. Here is a distribution of the normal stresses of the stresses in order to make it clear for you. Bending normal stress is maximum at the edges and zero on the normal axis. The torsional shear stress is maximum at the peripheral, the whole, the whole circle, and it is zero at the center. Transverse shear stress is maximum along the normal axis and zero at the edges. So here uh, we deduce that point A has higher stress than point B because the stress on point A is uh, higher than point B. Okay, that's all. Thank you for your attention and hope you understood this example.